Recapping our top story, the Rockets extended their home winning streak to 13 games with their win over the Clippers. And they now lead the Warriors by two games, plus the tiebreaker, a virtual three-game lead atop the Western Conference. But Austin Rivers making it tight late, under a minute to go, two-point game. And James Harden says, that's cool, two-point game, not anymore, because I'm going to put you in the blender and start cooking. 101-96, the Rockets get the victory, and James Harden has the last lap. Now, Friday brings the second of a back-to-back -back for the Clippers as they battle the Thunder in OKC, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And then it's Heat and Lakers from Staples at 10.30. Coverage begins at 7.30 with the Auto Trader pregame. Russell Westbrook has 100 triple doubles and counting. He's one of four players with 100 plus triple doubles. His average is in them 27, 12, and 12 basically. And he's the only player to record triple doubles against all 29 teams. And by the way, we can't leave that one out. How about an 82% winning percentage when Russell Westbrook has a triple-double? Unbelievable. Rick Hamlet, Karan Butler, and Kevin McHale. So on Friday night on TNT, do we see triple-double 101 from Russell Westbrook? I think so. You know, he's in a good rhythm right now, and it's, def it's, it's desperate. Like, it's going to be needed because you don't know if Paul George playing or not. And he has, as he go, they go. And he has to be aggressive, and he's playing at an amazing rate right now. Yeah, you know, I just think that he's got to play his game, make everybody play with him. If Melo doesn't want to run, Melo doesn't get shots. Let him bust out of there. Let him attack. He's so good when he's just kind of sifting through the defense and just winding through, finding people. He's, he's not nearly the player when he's trying to play under control. When he's on that edge of out of control, he's at his best. And let him go. Look at the winning record, 82 and 18 when he gets a triple-double and his 100 triple-doubles. That's amazing. And that speaks to it's not selfishness. No. It's not a guy just going for his and they're, they're 500 when he does these amazing statistical things. Now, Paul George, uh, with a pelvic strain, is questionable for Friday night's game against the Clippers. The team actually changed the diagnosis from a groin injury to a pelvic strain. And uh, George did some non-contact work in practice on Thursday. Um, so, Karan, you tell me, when a guy does non-contact work, the day before a game, is that an indication that he probably won't play? I think that's a good sign. It's probable, you know, and it's a 50-50 chance that he may be out there because he's going through the motions to see can he get his shots, can he play and get to certain spots on the floor without the contact. And if, you know, come game day, he's ready to go. You know, he haven't missed that much time for him to be, like, questionable to the fact that can he play with contact or whatever. It's all about functional movement, and if he can do that, he'll get out there. No, the big thing is they change him from pelvic to groin. I mean, he's or groin to pelvic. He's okay. I mean, there's nothing about him. No, I think, you know, it's one of those things when you're doing um, one on O work and doing that stuff. It, that shows that you, you know you can play. Because, like, when you're really hurt and the coach says, can you do anything? Like, no, nah, I can't. You can't get off the training table. So he's out there doing some stuff. Now, he may not be able to play you know, the next game, but that means he's closer, which, which they need him. They need all, all hands on deck in Oklahoma City coming down the stretch here. All year long, I've been waiting for that team to kind of catch that rhythm and run off 10, 12 in a row, and they just never have. So the Heat lost to Sack on Wednesday uh, without Dwayne Wade, Hassan Whiteside, and Josh Richardson. Wade and Whiteside have already been ruled out for Friday's game. Richardson is listed as doubtful. So can Miami field a competitive team? And maybe win this game without those three players. If they get back to their defensive principles. Yeah. And, you know, Eric Spoelstra is a guy that hangs his hat on the defensive end. And you see, you know, opponent's defense uh, from the three-point percentage, you know, 11 and a half made, you know, the record four and four. They have to get back to that, even without Whiteside being the anchor in the middle, you know, blocking shots and doing all those things. So that's something that's got to be point of emphasis. No question. Now that Memphis is, is out of the grit and grind business anymore, they're just losing. <laughs> this is, might be the grittiest team in the Eastern Conference. They come after you. They get after you, man. They, they, they're, they play that tough man-to-man -man defense. they got a lot of guys that can switch, and they get up in you. When they switch, they're not afraid to body you. There's always jawing going on and stuff like that. So you know, the Heat has got to get back to doing what they do really well, which is irritating the other team on the defensive end. Um, we, we know uh, the Lakers were major adversaries of yours. Once upon a time, this gentleman played for the Lakers. How and why are they playing so well right now? I just think with the addition of Isaiah Thomas, you got a guy that has a certain disposition about himself. He's trying to put the league on notice. This is an audition period for himself. And he's trying to let everyone know that, hey, look, I can play at a high level. Brandon Ingram, young star. 
Kyle Kuzma, a guy that came out of nowhere that putting everybody on notice, just saying, look, we can play this game at a high level, and not to mention Julius Randle. I mean, he's been a monster on the offensive end, getting better defensively. These guys are buying into a winning culture, and Lonzo Ball and all those guys believe that they can beat anybody on any given night. They push more, they run more, Isaiah Thomas gets out in the break more, he has more odd man situations, more open court, and he has people running with him. You can run all you want. If you're playing in Cleveland, no one's running with you. You get down there, you're like, where'd everybody go? And so everybody's running. It's just a better style and a better fit for him. Coming off the bench, it gives him a lot of explosiveness and a lot of scoring for the Lakers. I saw earlier today, Isaiah Thomas put it out there. I'm not a six man. You know, don't even think I'm going to be yeah, a six man Just putting man that out year. there. Just put it out there, all right? So in other words, back up the Brinks truck and pay a star. Or I'm not a bench guy. All right, it was Unity Night at Phillips Arena as the Hawks hosted the Hornets. It was also the Dwight Howard Ball, and Dwight had a monster game against his former team. This is Game Time, presented by Kia.